Hi folks, it seems crazy in this day and age that a CNC machine could crash because you never entered the tool height. Shouldn't it know? Similarly, if the tool height in CAM and the tool height in your machine are really different, shouldn't we be able to check that? We can. So let's walk through what's happening both in Fusion 360 on the machine control and the JavaScript side of modifying the post. We'll make this post available if you're less interested in learning and more interested in just having it. And I wanna do this for Linux CNC as well, AKA Pathpilot. And we're gonna to have to do it a little bit differently than we did on the kind of FANUC based Haas type post. So let's do that together uh, as an example of learning some more post tweaking. We're actually gonna start in the Haas mill operators manual. I'm gonna search for 2001. And that brings me to the macros variable table. We can see the range of 2001 to 2200 is the tool length offsets. This is great because Haas makes it really easy to check this. The length value in the Haas control of tool five becomes macro variable 2005. Similarly, the length on tool eight, macro variable 2008. LT is fancy code for less than, and then this value comes from Fusion 360. We'll dive in deeper in a minute. So what this line says is whatever the tool length value is for tool five, if it's less than 3.3253, then generate this alarm with this comment, tool five is too short. So what's great is if the value is zero because it was never touched off, it will trip this alarm. We'll do a recap at the end talking about what this code does and doesn't do so that you can tweak it as you see fit. Here is the snippet of code that does this tool length check sequence. We've got it fairly well commented. Let's break it down and show you why it's not that intimidating. Remember from the macro variable section of the Haas manual, tool length offsets start at 2001. We wanna create a variable called first length var of 2000. We'll come back to that in a second. We then create a variable, the tool table, and we loop through looking to see how many tools there are. Because if we have six different tools used, we need six if statements. And what we do is we write that if statement that we saw from the posted code, across multiple different lines, we concatenate it together. It just makes it easier for the programming. We start with an if, the pound to access the macro variable, and then we use that 2000 variable, but we add to it whatever tool number we are. So this whole line right here will ultimately read something like pound 2005 for tool five. There's the LT for the less than. And then this is where we really tie into the Fusion 360 tool library. We grab the tool body length and the tool holder length. Body length comes from this variable right here, length below holder. The length below holder is the only one that actually adjusts how far the tool protrudes below the face of your tool holder itself. And then tool.holder length grabs a dimension from the holder. So you do need to have a, the correct holder applied to your tool for this to work. And finally, the text to throw the error, pound 3000, which if we hop back into our Haas PDF and scroll down, we can see that pound 3000 is a programmable alarm. We're also adding the comment just to clarify to the operator what exactly is going on. That whole if statement is then looped however many number of tools that there are with one exception, which is if the tool type equals tool probe, it will not conduct this length check. And we do that with the continue command in JavaScript, which says skip the rest of the code in this instance of the loop, but stay in the loop. So it'll index to the next tool. The really nice thing about the Haas control here is that because each tool has a macro variable for its height that we can access at any time, it means this post can easily create as many if statements as needed to automatically check behind the scenes at the beginning of the program. With Linux CNC, AKA Pathpilot, we don't have the same type of macro variables for each individual tool in the machine control. So instead what we're going to do is we're gonna wait until each tool change and that tool height is applied and we'll check it then. So let's figure out how to do that. The first thing we want to do is post our code and take a look at where we want to insert this new code. I want it right after this T8 G43 line because that G43 G code is what applies the 8H, which is the height offset for that tool. Two ways that we can figure out where to insert that code. If I'm lucky, searching for 43 will show me where I need to be. And sure enough, if we look at this line, right block T, plus the tool number, so T8, G format, G43, G43, H format, et cetera. So this is the section. If that doesn't work, and oftentimes it doesn't, card here, really cool technique that we go over using Visual Studio Code where you can actually click on the posted G code and it will tell you what section of the post made that line of G code. So let's get our bearings in this section of the code. I think we can start right here. If we take a look at this line, 
and we move up to the first section, we see this if insert tool call. And sure enough, if I click on the open bracket, you can see that that whole section of code goes down to here. So this section of the post deals with calling a new tool. But before we write any real code, I'm just gonna test that. So I'm gonna say write comment JWS testing. We'll save that, post our code, and we should have a comment after every tool change. We've got one after the first one. And scroll down, we've got the same comment after the second one. Perfect. Next up, I Googled Linux CNC variables, and it ends up they call them parameters. So we jump down to the parameters section. Starting with 5104 is the tool offsets for X, Y, and Z. So 5403 will be the Z offset of the current tool. Hopping back into the Haas post, let's copy and paste most of that if statement that we already wrote. In Linux CNC, the if statement needs to be inside of a subroutine. So we need to start with this O number. So we'll type O100. On the Haas post, we used this section of the code so that it resolved to something like pound 2003. Well, we know in Linux CNC, it's always gonna be the same variable. It's gonna be pound 5403. We can move the less than to this line. That line doesn't change. We just need to then close it off. This code won't work at the machine, but it should post. So let's see how we get along. So we still have our comment, and then we have this, this line. Forgot a space between the less than and the number. Let's fix that. I'll add a space after the LT before the end quote. We'll need to end the subroutine. And then we need to decide what we want to happen if the tool fails the test or if it's too short. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna put in a dwell or a pause. It's not necessary, but I like it. And then we're also going to trigger a proper path pilot warning that will both end the program and tell the operator what happened. We want the dwell to be a G4 P1 for a one second dwell. We'll write that by doing right line G format dot format four. So that puts in the G4 and then we'll say plus P1. We can also make use of the Linux CNC message command, which has, in my opinion, a bit of a strange nomenclature. It's MSG comma what you want it to say, and all of that's in parentheses. So we'll say right line, open paren. We'll start our quote, and then we'll do another paren because we want this paren to actually be in the posted code. Message comma, please recheck tool. Now let's make sure this works and then we need to make some improvements. But it reads that if the Z height variable is less than the value we get from Fusion, do a one second dwell and then send this message. I forgot the end paren there as well. So fix those two things. Now we need to fix the subroutine nomenclature and we want to improve the message. The reason we need to fix the subroutine nomenclature is that you can't have the same subroutine number multiple times in a program. And this section of code is going to get looped with each tool change. So we can't just say O100 oh, and we can't hard code this into the post. So we're gonna add a variable, var JWS loop. We're gonna use that variable as the name of the subroutine. To easily make it unique, we'll use the tool number. Well, we have that code right here, tool format dot format tool number. I'm gonna first add 10 to it so that it becomes a value that ultimately ends up being in the hundreds. And then instead of saying right line O100, we'll say right line O plus JWS loop. So that'll start with the O that we need, and then it'll add in the value of JWS loop, which is 10 plus the current tool number. So if it was tool eight, it would actually come out as 108 versus say 18, and then it'll resume our if statement. Let's see if that works. Awesome, 0108. Make that same change to the end if.
And finally, I want a better Pathpilot warning that tells the operator exactly what happened. So instead of just saying, please recheck tool, we're gonna to say, please recheck tool. And we'll paste in our tool number again and plus height. So if that all goes well for tool five, it should say, please recheck tool five height. So tool eight in this example, 0108, if the value is less than this fusion value of that tool body length plus holder, dwell and message, please recheck tool eight height. I got one thing wrong on the parens there. And then 0108 end if. We'll fix that one goof. So we already looked at tool eight. Let's jump down to make sure it's working on tool five in this example. T5, H5, O105, if 5403 is less than the fusion value, pause, and please recheck tool five height. One more missing space caught me, but I think we're good. One last addition that I almost forgot, add the right line mformat.format30. .format that puts the M30 in, in the event the tool does fail the test, and that will force the program to reset. And then load that program up in PathPilot. Right now, I've got both the tools set to be too short. So this should fail immediately when it looks at tool eight, which has a length of five inches. We need it to actually be 5.474 inches. Cycle start. And sure enough, program resets. We have a status alert in yellow and it says, please recheck tool height eight. We go ahead and change tool eight to be long enough to pass the test and go back. It'll now complete that op, go to tool five. It'll ask us to put tool five in the spindle. But when we do so, same issue here, tool five was too short, program ends, and we get an alarm that says, please recheck tool five height. This program checks to see that the tool meets a minimum length. I could totally see shops wanting to rewrite it to make sure the control value isn't zero, meaning you've at least touched the tool off, or you could set it to a bracketed range to make sure that the tool isn't more than say 100,000 different, shorter or taller, that could really help long-term process reliability. Also, a big shout out and thank you to CJ Abraham over at Autodesk for helping troubleshoot some of this JavaScript code. But as always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. We've got more post-processor resources over on the NYC CNC website. Otherwise, take care, see you soon.